What's up guys, how's it going? Today we're going to learn more about the history of American Halloween. This guy's called JJ McCullough, I think you say his name. I've never seen him before, but he's just popped up on my YouTube recommended and it looks like he does some good videos. So we're going to give one a watch and find out about the history of Halloween because everyone knows about Halloween, but where does it come from? I actually have no idea. So Hello friends, my name is JJ, Let's and today I thought we would talk about Halloween. Is it Canadian? As you know, I am quite interested in the various things that make up American culture, and I would say that Halloween has got to be up there in the list of the top 10 most iconically American things of all. Like, check out this- What, what do you reckon are the top 10 things? American football's got to be up there, right? Baseball, going off sports. Statue of Liberty is something I always associate with America. Um... NASA, I always associate with America. Would I put Halloween? Maybe. I don't really know. Fast food, I definitely put with America. Sorry, guys. What else would I put there? I'm not sure. Let's find out what you... children's book of all the countries of the world I bought when I was in Japan. When you go to the page about the United States, you can see that they have <laughs> rocket ship, football, Statue of Liberty, and... Halloween. Now, Just no baseball. Like much of what defines modern American culture, Halloween is a product of two of the most cowboys. I'd associate cowboys with America. Most culturally revolutionary eras of American history, the late 1800s, often called the Victorian Age, and the immediate aftermath of World War II. And today I thought it might be fun to talk about Halloween from the perspective of the first era, because I recently bought this very comprehensive book about Halloween in America called Halloween in America and it has a lot of very cool Great title. primary source material documenting what early Halloween was like as well as documenting the origins of some of our most beloved Halloween traditions alongside a couple of other ones that haven't quite withstood the test of time. What is going before on we there? get into any of that, let us just hear a quick word from today's video sponsor Surfshark and the okay. spooky dangers. We're going to skip his uh, Surfshark advert. If you need a VPN, go and check out Surfshark. There you go. I've done it for you, mate. Look. When they think of a very stereotypically authentic cultural tradition, which is to say it is something that has been ruined for a long time, it has a lot of well-understood customs and rituals, and it evolved gradually <laughs> from hazy ancient practices into something that is still relevant to modern times. But that said, I think that when we analyze American culture, it is important that we don't overstate the supposed ancient roots of our modern traditions, just because I think that by virtue of being a new culture in the new world, Americans are not inclined to be a particularly backwards looking people. So while it is true that a few of the core foundations of Halloween, particularly the date of October 31st, can be traced back to centuries old practices in pre-Christian Europe, it is also obviously the case that most of us who celebrate Halloween today don't really know or care about any of that and don't really understand the holiday to be honoring a link to that past in any meaningful way. I do think, however, that it is relatively mainstream knowledge that the name Halloween means All Hallows Evening. Yeah, I did know Hallow that. Hallow is an old English word for saint or saintly. We still yeah. use a version of this word today when we talk about the hallowed grounds or the hallowed halls of some place we Hello. were here. Calling October 31st All Hallows Eve was a reference to the fact that November 1st used to be a Christian holiday called All Hallows Day. So it was a Christmas Eve, Christmas Day sort of thing. And the fact that the early Christian church scheduled it on this particular date is usually believed to have been a deliberate effort on their part to displace a pre-Christian festival known as Samhain that was popular in parts of Europe at the time. That was an parts evil of Europe, looking image. Like Northern Britain. Northern Britain is home we always get a to shout the out, don't we? peoples of modern day Ireland and Scotland who are often seen as maintaining more pre-Christian elements in their culture than the English who evolved from an Anglo-Saxon culture that assimilated more well, comprehensively in I'm part Irish, so you know, I'm part of both. To Christianity. And as a result, some aspects of the old Samhain festival continue to be practiced in Celtic culture even centuries after most Celts converted to Jesus, including rituals and traditions that were demonized by the more dogmatic English Christians as pagan or occult. <laughs> and this is a- Pagan. I don't know why the word pagan is just such a funny word. You pagan. Pagan, it's the p, 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 the popping of the p, 
pagan. Fact that would have been pagan. increasingly well known in late 19th century America, <laughs> given that one of the great fads of the growing middle class of that time was a fascination with all things occult. During this period, it had become much less taboo to be into ghosts and monsters and other things that would have previously been considered quite anti-Christian and demonic. This was partially a reflection of growing secularism in American culture and partially just a byproduct of the sort of curiosity and creativity that tends to flow from an increasingly wealthy, literate, and educated society. Now, one problem with being a middle-class person in late 19th century America was that life was pretty boring. This was an era before literally any form of modern entertainment had been invented, so one of the main ways that people amused themselves was just constantly throwing parties all of the Sounds time great. on any available pretext. So there would be harvest parties and <laughs> garden parties and Thanksgiving parties and Christmas parties and Fourth of July parties and May Day parties and hats. all the rest of it. And in all honesty, this is probably the main reason that Halloween as we know it exists today. Obscure Christian. I thought he was going to say it's probably the main reason we all have a problem with alcohol or something. Holidays like all Halloween. <laughs> Just because they were bored were back in the, day. in the 19th century than they are now. And thanks to the influence of Celtic immigrants in the United States and growing public fascination with all things supernatural, late Victorian era America naturally saw an increased awareness of how All Hallows Eve was connected to weird and interesting Celtic cultist stuff. So why not use it as a pretext for another party? Now what's interesting is that the book says that in the early days, Americans played up the Celtic angle of Halloween a lot more explicitly particularly the Scottish angle. The author says, The earliest symbols of Halloween, which appear at the turn of the century, include Scottish thistles, tartan designs, and other traditional Scottish themes. This looks more Christmassy than Halloween, don't you think, with the thistles? Indicating its Scottish origins. It's often thought to be an Irish holiday, but the earliest decorations never show shamrocks, leprechauns, etc. I was going to say that, that pumpkin's playing the bad pipes. That's definitely Scottish, not These Irish. These Scottish symbols quickly faded in favor of stuff linking All Hallows Eve to the American harvest season, however, including fall colors like orange and brown, the big full harvest moon, scarecrows, farms, and of course, pumpkins. Pumpkins are a fruit native to the Americas and have been sentimentalized for centuries as one of the great symbolic bounties of the new world. Given you know pumpkins, right? When I was young, or I think most people in England, we know pumpkins are for Halloween and we carve them, but no one really ever eats pumpkin. I've only recently discovered that pumpkins are actually so nice. Pumpkin soup, banging. Absolutely banging. And how big Or if you put it grow. in rice there like the Chinese do, folk tradition banging. in Europe of making lanterns for festivals out of the crappy little vegetables that they grow over there. And the only reason we make pumpkin lanterns on Halloween is because American so pumpkins proved so much better. Jack-o'-lanterns are probably the oldest continuously used symbol of Halloween and appear prominently in Victorian era postcards in more or less <laughs> the same form that we see them today. The name Jack-o'-lantern is a centuries old expression referring to a spooky floating flame. Ooh. Spooky floating flames being an old fashion scary thing that people don't care as much about anymore. The other Boot. big one being the Willow the Wisp. There is a story that you often hear these days that says that the name Jack-o'-lantern supposedly refers to an ancient Irish legend about a guy named Jack who had to carry around his soul in a turnip. But this is almost certainly a story <laughs> that was made up in more recent times to justify the tradition rather than vice versa. As that previous quote alluded to, the Irish like to take a lot of credit for bringing Halloween to America. And today, Halloween is a fairly big deal in Ireland. But this is one of those cases where the culture of immigrants in America actually had a bigger cultural influence on the motherland than the motherland did on the immigrants. Sort of like how Italian Americans only made pizza a big deal in Italy after they left, as I discussed in a previous <laughs> award-winning video. So the Victorian party people love to dress up for their soirees, and as a result, the earliest Halloween costumes understood the word in a more 
old fashioned way in the sense of just being vaguely occult themed dresses and oh, suits these are pretty things. cool that pumpkin one goes off look at that guy on the right <laughs> the idea of dressing as something specific for halloween came later i will note that a distressing lot of these old brochures describe the ideal halloween costume as being super gay but of course that was just the word people used back then to describe Happy. stuff that was colorful or fun the concept Happy, of kids going door to door fun. in costumes to trick or treat He's seems a gay to be old fellow. a pretty recent thing with the earliest documented reference to it according to the oxford english dictionary being found in an alberta newspaper from 1927 so Jesus. if you're my age it is likely that your grandparents were born before trick-or-treating it is not really clear why or how this particular tradition of handing out free candy to random neighborhood children evolved, though the most common theories are that it's just a sort of ritualized recognition of the fact that by the 1920s, Halloween had become known for tricks and treats. The tricks part probably came about as people realized that wearing a costume at night made it easy to play pranks, pranks being another very common way that people kept themselves amused in the old days. While the treat part was probably just an outgrowth of the sort of middle-class generosity that was becoming more common in the late 19th century. As ordinary people began to have more food and stuff to share with others, traditions of individualized giving became more common. Giving to charities, giving birthday presents to your friends, that sort of thing. So giving candy to the neighborhood children on the occasion of a big holiday seems consistent with this general trend. But if trick-or-treating didn't come about until the 1920s, what sort of Halloween traditions existed before? Well, most of them were pretty party-based. Some of them- Do you guys do apple bobbing? I don't know why that just pops into me. Do you know where you get a bucket of water, you put apples in there, you got to put your hands behind your back and you just got to get as many apples as you can using your mouth. Is that an English thing or do you guys do that as well? I'm still exist in some form games today, we play. or at least are still present in the popular imagination. Bobbing for apples oh. or playing other apple related games. Do you guys do this? Common Halloween party Does activities we still do in this? the early days of the holiday. Apples, of course, being another And that fruit. one, you can tie like a donut on a string and then it's like swinging and you've got to try and eat it using only your mouth. Fruit associated with the fall harvest season and a fruit that most Americans had only recently started eating as we learned in this award-winning video. Sometimes Halloween party goers would eat other traditional autumn themed foods as well, like corn or nuts or pumpkin pie. But the pumpkin biggest pie. Halloween thing of all never was still. fortune telling. Fortune telling and especially communicating with the spirit world was a huge, huge fad among upper Creeper. and middle class Americans in the Victorian age. And this played a major role in helping Halloween parties go mainstream. In the traditional Celtic folklore, all Hallows' Eve, October 31st, was the final day before winter, and the changing of the seasons was associated with the coming and going of spirits, and thus a time in which it was easiest for humans to speak with them. So 19th century Americans seized on this fact and used Hallows' Eve as a pretext to gather their friends together and do the various fortune-telling and dead. divination rituals and games that were popular at the time. It Has anyone ever... I don't believe in that stuff, you know. I just don't. I've never been to one, so I, it, I shouldn't really judge it because I've never tried it myself. It just sounds a bit lally da to me, you know. What do you guys think? Do any of you like it? Have you tried it? Should I try it? Imagine doing that for a video. Could go badly wrong though, couldn't it? Included stuff like tarot cards, seances. Just get told I'm going to die or something. And some even weirder routines that are long forgotten now. What I was that? surprised at how many of these old timey postcards depicted looking in the mirror as this very iconic Halloween thing. This is a reference to a practice known as scrying. That's another thing we do. Do you do Bloody Mary? If you look in the mirror and say Bloody Mary three times, then she'll appear and she's going to kill you. Do you have that as well? Which was when you sort of stared meditatively into the mirror until an image of the future or your dead relatives or the man you were going to marry or whatever began to appear. This fell out of fashion as a tradition as more formal forms of occultism fell out of fashion. But it's worth noting that scrying is also where the cliche of a witch looking into her magic crystal ball comes from. On that note, the spiritualist origins of Halloween are probably the main reason why witches in general are such a common Halloween icon. Given witches had long been America's go-to symbol of a creepy person who had rejected Christianity for the occult, 
since at least the time of the infamous Salem witch trials in the late 17th century. Our modern stereotypical image of a witch as an old crone with a pointy hat flying on a broomstick seems like the sort of thing you might have expected the American party favor companies to have just made up for the purposes of selling all of this newfangled Halloween merch. But I was surprised to learn it has actually been the Western world's dominant cliche for several hundred years, as you can see in this woodblock print from 15th oh, century Germany, or this early 17th century engraving of a famous witch from England. But despite the long-standing popularity of drawing witches in this way, once again, no one really seems to know why. Do you, have you ever heard about witches, what they used to do when they caught them? Like, well, if they suspected someone of being a witch, they'd like throw them in a river. They tie like heavy rocks to the feet. And if they sank and died, it meant that they weren't a witch because they didn't save themselves. If they managed to escape, and like come back to the surface, that meant that they used magic to escape, so they were a witch, and then they burned you to death. So basically, if you were suspected of being a witch, you died either way, whether you're innocent or guilty. So if there was anyone, had someone you didn't like, you just accuse them of being a witch and the problem's done. Why <laughs> we started doing Brutal. it. Actually, can I just pause for a second here and make a general statement? I've now made over 500 videos, and if there is one thing I have consistently learned from researching all of these different cultural things, it's that in most cases, no one has any clue where anything weird comes from. If there <laughs> is a tradition in our culture that seems inexplicable, it is very likely that it is just something that has mutated out of some long forgotten obscure thing from hundreds of years ago, and there exists no persuasive historical evidence to help us clearly understand how we got from there to here. There are a lot of quote unquote educational channels out there that when faced with an intriguing mystery, will just Google it and then feed their audience whatever BS explanation they found on the first search result. But not me. My promise to you so, is that I will consistently err on the side of just openly acknowledging the unsolvable mysteries of our culture and avoid feeding you these cute little stories that might be intellectually satisfying, but usually have very little hard proof supporting them. If you want to speculate about why you think witches wear pointy hats, go nuts, but you don't need to hear someone else's speculation. Anyway, American Halloween monsters is a topic I am pretty interested in, and I already made a whole award-winning video about the most iconic ones that we see today, like Frankenstein, Mummy, and Dracula. But as I explained in that book, video, right? these characters all come from the post-war Halloween era, since they were all based on characters from the various Hollywood movies that had become popular by that time. The canon of American Halloween monsters that you saw in the late 19th century, by contrast, was a lot more limited, alongside witches and their little black cat buddies, early American Halloween decorations mostly just featured Ooh. owls, bats, ghosts, and red devils. That last one is a good example of just how secular America was getting by the turn of the last century. Certainly just a few decades prior, having a bunch of illustrations of Satan in your home would have raised a few questions. <laughs> Skeletons and skulls featured prominently as well. Bones have long been symbols of death in Western culture. Yeah. I wonder why. Really all cultures for obvious reasons. <laughs> but it's been suggested that the American concept of whimsical Halloween skeleton people dancing and having fun and all of that might be an outgrowth of Mexican cultural influence on the United States. Mexicans, of course, have their own spooky things the, themed holiday. The day of the Dead, don't Day we? of the Dead, the day of the which dead. is celebrated the day after Halloween, All Hallows Day. The, the Day of the Dead also arose How do you say that? fusing this Christian holiday with various pre-Christian traditions involving the macabre, in this case, those of Mexico's indigenous people. But overall, it is mostly just a weird coincidence that these two major nations of the New World both wound up inventing occult-themed holidays in such close proximity to each other. But yeah, traditional Day of the Dead decorations have long included skeletons, including goofy, silly ones. And when you look at some of the so early cool. American Halloween decorations, it's not unreasonable to suspect not as that cool, at least some guys. Mexican influence was at play here. <laughs> These little jack-o'-lantern goblin critters were very popular in the early days as well. A lot more so than they are now, at least. Next to witches, they were probably the most commonly seen monsters on 
Halloween postcards and toys of the Victorian age. Keeping with the harvest theme, they were often depicted as little scarecrow-like creatures. If you've seen that terrible sequel to The Wizard of Oz from the 1980s, you know that there is a creepy jack-o'-lantern monster I thing never saw that this movie, film. which is in turn based on a character that appeared in the actual book sequel to The Wizard of Oz, The Marvelous Land of Oz, which was written in 1904. Alrighty, so I think that is about all I've got to say about old-timey Halloween. Like I said, however, this is only really half the story. Like most great American cultural traditions, it wasn't until after the Second World War that the holiday really kicked into high gear and headed towards becoming the $12 billion extravaganza. Whoa, that is I didn't know it was worth that much money. This is a story for another time. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget. Thanks for making the video, mate. First video we've watched of him, JJ. Um, I, I enjoyed it. It was it was quite informative, very informative. I, I appreciated the, what he said about it. he's not just going to give you little intellectual satisfactory pieces of information if they're not ex like exactly true. We did a video recently about the um, the Star Spangled Banner and people said that all of those facts had kind of been dramatized to to make it a more satisfying story when re in reality it's not needed. So I appreciate what he said here. I really enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of this guy down below in the comments. We can react to more of his videos. And subscribe to my channel. Go and subscribe to JJ. I'll see you for the next video. Take it easy. Peace.